how's it going? This is Marty Kokish, and uh, welcome to Marty's Garage. Um, and here with me today, I've got uh, Bernie Feedy. Hello. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, having a little little car trouble, little trouble with one of our other cars. Um, we've got a Saab 93 up here, and uh, this is my wife's car. And we started seeing um, like randomly, and like when she'd brake and when she'd start up and stuff. Uh, we started getting the low oil nut light and uh, took it home, checked it out. Well, our oil's full, so what's going on here? <laughs> um, and uh, previously we had a turbo go on in this car. Um, it, was, it was a pretty big job, and uh, uh, Bernie took care of that for us. And so um, he knows his stuff. This is you primarily work on Sobs and yep. Volvos, right? Sobs and Volvos. Yep. So he knows these things inside out. So we looked them up again, and. Uh, um, I don't know, maybe you could explain what, what usually happens, what, sure. what you usually think it is. Well, typically, uh, if an oil light comes on, uh, it's an oil pressure problem, not an oil uh, volume or not an oil level problem. And uh, that indeed was the case. But uh, typically, the problem is oil sludging in, in the uh, oil pickup screen and plugging it so that the engine can't produce oil pressure. And, but that wasn't the case this time. Uh, you want to show them one of these? Yeah, this is what we typically find uh, is you should have a nice clean screen in the center. And typically when they show up with the oil light on, we've got this charcoal um, accumulation or just thick oil sludge on there, which starves the engine of oil. That wasn't the case here. Um, this time it was a plastic uh, timing chain rail that had started to come apart and the chunks of plastic found their way throughout the engine and of course got into the oil pump and the uh, more importantly the uh, bypass valve for the oil pump so even though the pump was pumping it was just pumping it back into the oil pan rather than into the engine so uh, and it's gonna it's quite a job uh, the engine would have to come out entirely and be disassembled to get the, the timing chain off so. And so here's kind of the kicker. <laughs> so in my last episode, you saw we pulled the uh, the engine out of the MGB and stuff, and so you kind of saw how that worked. Well, um, you know, it's, it's quite a quite an intensive uh, labor adventure, I exactly. guess you could say. Yep. And so it's it's a uh, it's not a cheap procedure, and you know times are tough now. So I'm thinking. Maybe I'll take a crack at this. You know, and it's uh, it's gonna be harder than the, than the MG, but you know maybe I can save a buck. Well, then I called Bernie back, told him what I was thinking, and uh, he had a little surprise for me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you could say. So I don't yeah. know if you want to explain. Uh, well, the why this was a bad idea. <laughs> the surprise is um, this car has to be raised up, and the engine and transmission have to be taken out as a unit. For from the bottom, so uh, it, it's no longer a do-it-yourself project. No I don't matter, have one of these. <laughs> <laughs> no matter how ambitious, it's not no longer a do-it-yourself do project. So uh, that that changes a lot of things. It does. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we've got some thinking to do because um, we were we we're kind of looking to sell this car, um, and now we're looking at a lot of money which we don't have to. To repair it so we've got to look over our options and, and figure out what we want to do but uh, I don't know I'm gonna sleep on that one <laughs> maybe but uh, I don't know as always thanks for watching um, any feedback um, greatly appreciated uh, you can uh, shoot me an email at marty's garage at gmail.com and the show is available on iTunes and the Zoom marketplace so thanks for watching thanks Marty. <laughs>